When the AV Club travels, we always make time to visit pop culture landmarks. If something memorable happened in the world of film, TV, books, or music, we want to go there. We're not just tourists, we're pop pilgrims. Now, pretty much everyone knows San Francisco's Lombard Street, the crookedest street in the world. But travel just one block south and you will find a hidden pop culture gem. 900 Lombard, the house from Vertigo. Jeffrey M. Anderson of Cinematical.com. Tell us where we are and why we're here. We are at 900 Lombard Street, which is Jimmy Stewart's apartment in Vertigo. Jimmy Stewart plays Scotty, who is a retired police detective, and he's hired to, to follow this man's wife to find out what she's up to. He thinks that she may be in danger. Mm -hmm. And um, she, he follows her around for a while, and she jumps into San Francisco Bay. He rescues her and brings her back to his apartment, and that's the first time we see the apartment. Mm -hmm. He gets a phone call, goes to the other room, comes back, and she's gone. Mm -hmm. And then the next day in the film, she returns to his apartment to apologize. Madeline is, is unable to remember where the apartment was, and she finds it via the landmark of, the, of Coit Tower, which you can see out the front window when you're inside Jimmy Stewart's apartment, although I don't think that... Yeah. I don't think it's really shot inside this building. Right up the block is the infamous stretch of... The crookedest street in the world. Yes. It is the crookedest street in the world, okay. Yeah. It's a go-to location for the city, but obviously because of this, the steepness of the hill and the weird crookedness of the hill, it's meant to be a metaphor for his, his vertigo uh -huh. and uh, the way that everything is kind of, you know, a little bit lopsided and a little bit dizzy for him. Let's take a walk over to the house and uh, get a closer look. The house is a little different than the original movie. I think the, the roofers weren't there in the original movie. Yeah, that ladder the, wasn't there. Yeah, so that lot's changed. This bush isn't here in the movie, obviously, because you can see the iron grate when they arrive. I have to look at the film again and see if there's a baby bush in there. <laughs> I don't, that's, this is the same bush 60 years later. Okay, so they painted the door. But it does have an old-fashioned door knocker on it and an old-fashioned doorknob. You guys know this is the house from Vertigo? You know the Hitchcock movie? Those guys don't know that they're working on a piece of film history. No. How is the geography of here, of Lombard, and of San Francisco used in the movie. It's a movie where they, they, there's a lot of following through the city. There's one character following another through the city, mm -hmm. and so it's the sort of personality of the city comes through. It's, it's pretty much the ultimate San Francisco movie. You think it's the ultimate? I... It's, it's, to, it's to San Francisco what Tokyo story is to Tokyo, I think. San Francisco is such a, it's such a strange town. It's, uh, it's a town where there's uh, people who are known for being liberal here, but it's, it's also a town where people are sort of um, a little more open and free. There's a lot of sort of exploring of self in this town. Mm -hmm. So Vertigo is a, is a movie where a lot of identity is at stake and there's a lot of people sort of trying to figure out who they are and trying to uncover who somebody else is and that kind of thing. Thank you, Jeff. You can see more of Jeff's work at the San Francisco Examiner, Cinematical.com, and Common Sense Media. Thank you for being here today with us. Thank you. Boom. Enjoy the rest of our creepy-ass town. <laughs> Got it.